Imagine waking up, and the sunrise is dimmer than it should be. Not hidden by clouds, but eclipsed by something that has no surface, no light, no mercy. A perfect circle of nothing is sliding between us and the rest of the universe. Stars behind it simply vanish, and the ground beneath your feet has already begun to forget which way is home. What if tomorrow a black hole arrived in our solar system? Not in a billion years, tomorrow. Black holes are not science fiction. They are places where gravity has won so completely that space and time surrender. This is not fantasy. Every piece of physics we will explore is real, tested, published. Only the moment of arrival is imaginary, for now. We follow one possible story, a lone stellar mass black hole, 10 times heavier than the sun, yet smaller than a city, wandering the frozen dark until it crosses an invisible line and our quiet corner of space becomes its hunting ground. Some of us will watch planets die. Some of us might live long enough to see the stars go out one by one. And some endings may not be endings at all. It appears without warning, 150 astronomical units out, five times farther than Neptune, a rogue stellar mass black hole born billions of years ago in a distant supernova kicked free from its home galaxy, drifting alone for eons. Its event horizon is only 60 kilometers across. You could stand on it, if standing were possible, and never notice the horizon beneath your feet. But its gravity is a whisper that carries across the void. We detect it first not by seeing it, we never truly see it, but by the way starlight bends around an empty point in the sky. Gravitational lensing turns background stars into perfect Einstein rings. Then the orbits speak. Sedna, Eris, distant snowballs of the Kuiper Belt, they all shift by tiny, impossible amounts. LIGO and VIRGO HUM with a low, continuous chirp no colliding neutron stars could ever make. Within days, the verdict is unanimous. Something is here, and it is moving sunward at 40 kilometers per second. The first anomalies are almost beautiful. Neptune's position drifts by millimeters, then tens of kilometers. Astronomers think it's an error, it isn't. New Horizons, long silent, suddenly reports attitude thruster firings it never commanded. The spacecraft is being pulled sideways by a force that shouldn't exist out there. GPS satellites begin gaining or losing a few meters of altitude for no reason. Tides arrive three minutes early on the Pacific coast. Nobody connects the dots yet, but professional and amateur telescopes start recording the same impossible sight, a patch of sky where background stars flicker and stretch into arcs around nothing. Neptune is the first to feel real pain. Its orbit elongates into a thin oval. Triton, its largest moon, begins spiraling inward, doomed to be torn apart in decades. Uranus follows, its faint rings glowing as tidal heating liquefies subsurface oceans of ammonia. Out in the dark, the Kuiper Belt becomes a shotgun blast. Thousands of icy worlds are nudged onto paths that cross each other for the first time in four billion years. 
gravitational echoes ripple outward like pond rings, and every deep space probe we ever launched, Voyager, Pioneer, New Horizons, suddenly finds itself accelerating toward the inner system, pulled by a hand that was never meant to touch them. In observatories, supercomputers run simulations that all end the same way. The intruder will pass within two astronomical units of the sun in less than 90 years. In government bunkers, contingency plans are dusted off, plans written for asteroids, not this. The media names it Sharon because it ferries worlds to the underworld. Social media collapses under conspiracy and prayer. Stock markets freeze. And yet in the noise, a strange calm settles over some of us. Because for the first time in history, every human alive shares the exact same deadline. Neptune's blue atmosphere stretches into a glowing comet-like tail. Uranus tilts violently, its poles swapping places in months instead of millennia. Saturn, the rings are the first to go, compressed into a glowing accretion disk that lights the night side of the planet like a second sun. Titan is ejected entirely, a new rogue moon sailing into interstellar space with its methane seas still liquid. Jupiter, the king, tries to fight. Its enormous gravity slingshots some moons into escape, captures others from Saturn. But even Jupiter is dragged inward its great red spot unraveling into crimson ribbons. The asteroid belt turns into a machine gun aimed at the inner planets. Ceres, Vesta, thousands of smaller rocks, some flung outward, some inward. Earth now lives under a sky that occasionally rains mountain-sized stone. Now it is close enough that the naked eye can see the distortion. At dusk, the western sky contains a black disk ringed by the warped light of the Milky Way. The sun and stars circle it like water around a drain. Earth's orbit stretches. Years become 400 days long, then 300, then 420 again, Seasons vanish. One hemisphere bakes for months while the other freezes. The moon, caught between two masters, begins a slow, deadly wobble. Tides of 300 meters scour coastlines clean of cities. Satellites fall in fireballs every night. And still, the black hole itself remains invisible. Only its gravity, its lensing, its terrible absence betrays where it is. Best case, it passes 0.8 AU from the sun. Close, but not fatal. Earth is whipped into a new, highly elliptical orbit. Winters of minus 80 degrees Celsius. Summers that boil the oceans. But life clings on underground, under ice, in submarine cities. Worst case, the periastron is inside Earth's current orbit. Tidal forces stretch our planet into an ellipsoid. Volcanoes ignite along every fault line. The atmosphere begins to leak into space like air from a punctured balloon. Eventually, the Roche limit is crossed, and Earth does not fall into the black hole it is torn apart long before it gets there, becoming a brief glowing ring of molten rock before that too 
is swallowed. The black hole slingshots around the sun and leaves forever, carrying Venus with it like a trophy. We inherit a broken system, a colder sun, a wounded Earth, no outer planets, but we survive. The sun is tugged into a tight binary dance. Solar flares sterilize the inner worlds for centuries. Humanity's remnants flee to Mars or floating habitats. The black hole settles into a wide orbit, a permanent dark companion. Every few hundred thousand years it returns, and civilization rises and falls with its cycle, like seasons written in extinction. We like to believe we are safe because we are small. But small things die just as completely. A rogue black hole needs no malice, no intent. It only needs to exist and to pass by. There may be millions of them drifting through the galaxy right now, invisible, patient, inevitable. We have never seen one coming because by the time we do, it is already too late. Our solar system is not a fortress. It is a snowflake drifting above a candle. And the candle has been burning for 13.8 billion years. So sleep well tonight. The stars are still in their places. The sun will rise on time. But somewhere out there, in the perfect dark between galaxies, something with no name and no light is moving. It may never find us, or it may already be on its way. And if it is, we will never see it coming. We will only feel the first gentle, fatal tug, and know too late that the universe has remembered we are here.